Yo. 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 Guess who's Bizak? Um, I know y'all ain't tired of me. Y'all can't get tired of me because I ain't finished. I got so much work to do. So much uh, more to give, so much more information to share, so much more people to bring on this screen day in and day out, night after night. And when I tell you I'm bringing somebody, I'm bringing somebody. So what happens is I tell you, yo, I'm going to bring somebody. And if you watched the last night's show, I called him on the phone live and said, yo, Shabazz is coming on tomorrow. He let you know. Yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. Now, one thing I would say about this man, anytime I've called him, any day, any hour, he's always pulled up for me, always answers the phone. Anything I ever needed from him, always delivered, always been the same, same energy. When he's up, when he's down, always salute. And always show love since the first day I met him. So without any further ado, let me bring the man of the hour on the screen for you. Introduce yourself to the people. Shalom. Wings up. Shabazz the disciple, man. So you were here. We, we told him yeah. that you was coming. Yeah. You said you was coming. Oh, that's not word in our balls, man. That's it, man. <laughs> Baz, what's going on? It's good, doggy. Great, first man. First of all, I Baz. just want to say I was super hyped to see you on Drink Champs. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great thing. And I love to salute Nori for keeping it real and a hundred. There's only two dudes in the music industry that I know that did that. It was Nori with you and Big Pun with me. Mm. And they both got my favorite record. Wow. Pun we came up. So it was like a celebration for me to see that. You know, one of the realest ones. I call you the spook who sat by the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've been by the door all your life as a kid. And you know what's going on, but you, you, you're you using your platforms to help bring forth the information to bring life back. So... Salute to Doggy Diamonds. You know what I mean? So when and, you uh, said when you said Big Pun with you, what's your relationship with Big Pun? Well, this is how it went, right? One day they was filming the um it was Chuck Chill out in them. They was filming a TV show in the in the New Yorker Hotel on 34th Street. My partner Carlos Best had a, a, a studio on the 11th floor in that building. It's a hotel right diagonally across from the Madison Square Garden on 34th Street, 37th actually. So they was filming this TV show. With all of the rappers, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Little C's, everybody just came through. Me and Lord Jamal went up there, right? Because me and Lord Jamal was working, you know, every day in his crib on State Street. You know, boom. So when we got out the when we got out the MPV, little C's, all of them was right outside. And C's just came back from, from the Biggie situation. Hmm. He just got back from that. Biggie getting killed. So we was talking about that outside, and we was like, like bugging when he was telling us what happened. So then we go inside in um Cuban Links. Cuban Links that be with Big Punk. He yeah. was he's oh shit, what up, Bass? He's like, yo, come here, man. Yo, I got somebody who want to meet you. He brought me in. He's like, yo, here you go. And Pun was like, oh shit, yo. Oh man, yo, Bass, man. Yo, seriously, man. I got my whole style from Crime Saga, bro. He said, yo, you my favorite right now, bro. I was like, what? Wow. He's like, yo, I got it from Crime Saga. He's like, yo, me, you, and Killer Priest got to do a joint on my album. We're going to call it Let Them Have It. Mm. I was like, bet. But I was leaving to go on tour in Europe. I had like a two-month run, me and my cousin Freestyle from the Arsenals. And Pun, they was, they was living in Miami at the time, him and Joe. They mm. was in Miami. So we was on the phone. He was calling me, and I was packing my suitcase. He's like, yo, come to the studio tonight. I said, I got a flight right now. I'm out. He's like, yo, damn. I was like, you got a deadline? He's like, yeah, this is it. I said, damn, I had to catch the next one, man. He's like, yeah, you get you get the next one. The next album. Never did it. I left. I came back. Poetic was in the hospital. Well, um, matter of fact, we was in the hospital, we was in the studio doing the um the last Grave Diggers album when Poetic was sick. Hmm. Watching the news, Big Pun died. February the 7th, 2000. We were in the studio in Long Island, bugging. And then Poetic was on the news when he did that interview with Channel 9 about um, 
what's what um about the uh, music business not taking care of the artists with medical. You know, the receptionist at the front will get a uh, a medical plan, but the artists who make the whole thing go in here don't get nothing. So hmm. it was crazy at that moment. But when he said that to me, I was like, damn. I never got to do the song, but I always said, even even right now, I'll do it with his son, me, and Priest. Call it, let him have it. Little little son, keep all the money, keep everything. Wow. So so you were supposed to be on capital punishment. I was supposed to be on capital punishment. Wow. See, I love I, this. You know, this is what I love about I what we do. Here, I wouldn't be standing here doing this interview. We'd be somewhere else on some yeah. islands. But you know that's the dope thing about you know what we do when we when we tell yeah. this hip hop history because a lot of people don't yeah. know this hip hop history. I wouldn't even yeah. know you knew Pun. Yeah, that's my point. And Cuban links to this day, right? I had did a joint called My Hood Said Knock You Out, bigging up LL. But I did My Hood Said Knock You Out, right? And I did a video in Switzerland and everything, right? And in the second verse, I said, um, the one, the only one I ever give respect is is Big Pun. Mm. It was it was um because he told me Mano Imano in the New Yorker hotel he got his style from me. So every time I posted that video, Cuban Links would post it. He mm. would take it. He would share it on Twitter, on 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 Facebook. He'll just keep sharing it. Don't. Cuban Links got mad love for me, man. He know the real deal, son. Shout out to Cuban Links, man. So so you're saying right now you Priest and um Chris Rivers will do the record and yes, I'll do the song me Priest and Chris Rivers. Call it Let Him Have It, dedicated to his pops, and just clobber the whole industry, bar for bar. All mm. of us. And you said all and the he, proceeds could go to punk. He could keep everything. I don't want nothing. Wow. See? See? There's some real left. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's some real left. Yeah. 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 So, um, you see the topic, and and <laughs> me and you talk about this and build on this all the time. Yo. Um, The music industry, from what you knew to where it's at now, is completely different oh what's, man. what's the difference well when i came in i looked up to slick rick rakim krs the same list that you always go over because we from the same era those that took the ones who passed us the torch the first example of hip-hop was from them right so that's why i'm the way i am i'm i'm, I'm basically you know like I, I was raised by them so to see them banging out and speaking on the topics in the hood, having that voice for the hood, and then you got self-destruction, you got movements that everybody was unified, New York, everybody had their own style, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't, it, it was just, it was like a, a, you got this guy, you got that guy, everybody sounded different. The, the, the radio stations, Red Alert and all of them, Kiss FM and them, they always had a variety of beats and music. Like the Jungle Brothers, they had that lot with the with the clubhouse shit. Then you had like Latifah, she was bigging up the sisters. Then you had like like Rakim, he was just straight gangster street for the guards. You even had Tragedy, who was intelligent on some street shit, arrest the president, getting political with it before anybody. You know, you understand? So, and then you got KRS, who just he just broke everything down. Then you had Kane, which was the slickest talker ever. Like. So when you add all of that, and Slick Rick, the storyteller. So when you take those brothers, that's all of your genres right now. Like that's everybody is a, is a root is rooted from them. Coogee yes. Rap too. They rooted from these brothers. Coogee Rap was the storyteller, but the bloody one. Yes. Slick Rick was the storyteller for the children. Open the book. Sit around, kids. Let me teach you. He was the more friendly one, but it, it was dope. You understand? But it's like it was a it was a variety. You know what I mean? Now, it's just one concept, one style. Either you a slut, you know what I'm saying, or you a, a gang, 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 gang. You know, it's like this, man. Like I always said, man, hip hop, that's my heavenly bride. That was my wife. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. First, it was love at first sight. When my uncle younger night gave me that mic, that was my that was, that was my wedding night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those ain't, you know, bars neither, right? Mm -hmm. So I fell in love with it. Boom. Went to the staircase with Ra and Shy. It was fun. You could diss a nigga on record and we could we could laugh at, at that. Now, forget it. You see Meek Mills in, in, in 6 9 which is a distraction. But the point I'm trying to make to me, it looks like the industry realized the, the powers that be that run the whole thing, it's like a bank. You go get a loan, which is an advance, and then you got to pay it back through your sales and whatever else, right? If you don't, you're in the red. You, you got to recoup that. Mm -hmm. But 
It's like now they see how powerful this voice was. It took over and influenced the whole world. It's the number one genre in music in the world. It took over rock, country. It's, it's dominating everything right now. They use Every product is using it to sell their products. Mm-hmm. You want to sell beers? Get Nas to do a video mm-hmm. or a record. Shane Nas commercials. Get Jay to do Ace of Spades. Get, you you got to get a rapper to sell your product. Everybody caught on. We got to use that music to sell our products. So they saw how powerful this thing was. So they said, you know what? Let's weaponize it and use it to destroy them now. Mm. And that's the time we're in right now. The time we're in right now is just straight bombardment. Like, it's just nothing. Oh, they silenced the lambs and and, and pushed up the goats. Wow. In the scriptures, the Messiah said, he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. <laughs> he's going to separate them. The sheep are the humble ones, the righteous ones who are going to make it to the kingdom. The goats, they're going to burn, man, because they didn't help nobody. They didn't. They was ungrateful. When I was in jail, you didn't come visit me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I needed help, you didn't reach your hand out. But the sheep did all of that and just gave them your ass to kiss. Mm. And they said, how, did they, how do you know they did that? Because if you did that to my brothers, you did it to me. Mm. Right? So right now, the most high is separating the sheep from the goats. The lambs, they silence the lambs. <laughs> and all you're seeing is the goats. But to be a goat and on top, you know what you got to do. They wow. take you on that high mountain, just like they did our Savior. They take you on that high mountain. You see this whole, all of this will be yours. You see your, you see your billboard on, on, on Times Square. You see, your, your, you'll be on every, air, every airway. This kingdom will be yours. You'll be on top of this world. Mm. But you got to bend over. And the contract is sitting right there on the table <laughs> with all the color pens, like you and Timbo was talking about. Facts. You got to bend over, not kneel down, bend over. Wow. See, you said will, right? Yeah. That was ill. <laughs> ill will, right? Mm-hmm. You got to do the will of the most high. If you come, if you stay in tune with the will of the most high, you will never bow down. You'll never sell your soul. Mm. You can't do your own will. You got to do the will of the heavenly father to make it through this fucking maze that we're in right now. That's the trick. That's the key right there. Once you go astray from the will of the heavenly father, you're going to sell out. You're going to do anything for money. You you, you can't serve two masters, mammon or or the most high, because you're going to hate one and love the other. You're getting this money. Now you got to keep getting this money. Mm -hmm. You don't want to lose that. So you're doing whatever they say to do to keep that. When we, it was, it was, it was, at, a, it was at a point, it was at a point um, that we was in shock. Um, I was a little young when Scott LaRock got killed, but it was crazy that we was like, Scott LaRock got killed. Then That's after, crazy. yeah, then after that. Um, I think that was the first time in hip hop we fell in love with a group and somebody died. Yes. That was the- yes. And and now and now it's starting to now it's starting to come out later years later that that might have been that might have been something planned you know what I'm saying that might have been actually wasn't what this, we this thought it was right looking back at how yeah. this shit go yeah you know what I mean like wow son like hold up could it be yeah so so you know, uh man. so so we we went there now um uh uh Tupac gets killed right. Right. Then Biggie gets killed. Right. Now we in a day and time where rappers Yo. don't kill every week. Yo, listen, because the labels is putting hits on the rappers. Mm. If y'all ain't figure it out yet, the labels is doing it. Mm. This is why they doing it. Let them go in the studio. These little niggas don't know what the hell they reading. They signing. They don't even know what they signing. They ain't, I seen niggas sign contracts that they didn't even read or take to their lawyer, man. Yeah, so fact. I can imagine yeah. these little, I can imagine these little dudes, you know what I'm saying? They 18, they don't know what the hell is going on. They high on pills, right? So you get them a little 50 grand, they make a phone call with the money, and they looking good in front in front of their hood. Like you said, these little boys fronting. They little boys fronting. They taking the money, they doing all kind of wicked shit, putting diamonds in there. You put a price on your own head, nigga. Woo! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Say that again. Whoa. You put a price on your own head. <laughs> wow. Is to take that head right off your shoulder. Facts. Right you put a red. You put a red dot. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pandemic right now. Niggas are fucking.
fucking take your whole head, nigga. <laughs> you put a red dot on your head. Price on your own head. Gandhi, take the dot back shit. Wow. Anyway, the labels sign all these knucklehead junkies. You froze up, Baz. You froze up. They fucking signed these contracts. Uh huh. The labels are putting hits on these on these crack babies. Mm. I'm back. Yeah, you back. The labels yep. are putting hits on the artists. You know why? Because they figured out. Oh shit! You know what? When I was in Cali, I figured it out. I was with my man Jeremy, man Jeremy Mack. Wings up, man. My mm -hmm. director from Cali, right? He said. Yo, let's go film on Hollywood Boulevard. You know, we was doing our DVD, The Prophet Sees, right? Mm -hmm. So, boom. We're walking down Hollywood Bu Boulevard. We at the building where, uh, I think, Jay Leno, well, not Jay Leno, that other dude that, that always be having niggas up there. He be freestyling with them. The Roots is his band player. Jimmy Fallon. Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. He was in front of his spot where he do his show upstairs, right? So, Damian Wayans and them was filming, um, I forgot the name of the TV show, right around the corner. They was filming. But we was filming. So when we walked by, there was a movie theater right on the block, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the movie theater. It, was, it blew my mind. It was a hologram um, um, theater. 7.30, Tupac, live on stage. 8 o'clock, Bob Mark. Yo, they had all the artists that died performing hologram in that fucking in that theater, bro. That's mm. when I caught it. I said, oh, they don't need us no more. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. They don't need us no more. So what they doing is... It's like microwave shit. They get them, they sign them, get an album out of them. Soon as the album is done, they get murdered at the party, outside in the parking lot, King Bar, all of that. Right at the party? Mm -hmm. So that means that they got the album, and what did Jada Kiss say? Or oh, Biggie, you know nobody till somebody kills you? You know dead rappers get better promotion? Yep. You blow up after you die. And who's the beneficiary? You. Mm -hmm. Your parents got to, like you said last week, or two weeks ago, your parents got to fight the label for the money. Yeah, this is going on with Nipsey right now. Got a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah, your parents because you signed this contract. Your parents didn't even see it. You signed everything over to me if you die, and they didn't even know. So I'm the beneficiary. So I don't really need you. You go. I could. I could send you on tour with a hologram. And guess what? You don't get no tour money. We get all. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. And that's Yo, what the they cash they cashing out, son. Yeah. Everybody's selling their publishings. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's selling their catalogs. You see Wizard did it. You see uh Steve Stout. Everybody's just Blue Wayne did it. You're like, hold up, there's, there's something going on. Why everybody at this time 25 years later? It's like they had a fucking memo back in the days. Yo, make sure you you you, you hold on to everything for 25 years and then we're gonna cash out. Hmm. They're cashing out right now. Everybody cashing out right now. Because the money about to go digital. The economy's about to collapse. You understand? So they know right now, cash out. Cash out right now, nigga. And the labels done sped up the cash out. They clapping all. They getting these niggas clapped at their album release parties. Mm. Then the album come out after they dead. Quadruple plat. A, a one of them dudes got a billion Spotify streams. Where the money go? Yeah. And dead. Done and dead. So, um, how what did what did they change with the frequency in the music and the wording of the music to 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 how it's even making us go at each other crazy and straight go demonic, and, and, straight demonic, straight evil. Wickedness is exalted, righteousness is condemned. Mm. I don't want to hear that. Y'all niggas is they they're called like brothers like me and you who's trying to like like resonate with another a higher frequency, the God frequency. Y'all niggas is washed up. Y'all bitter because y'all didn't. Yeah, y'all didn't blow. So no, nigga, we didn't sell out. You mm. call them one hit wonders, but I understand that shit, nigga. Niggas ain't sell out. They ain't kneel down on that high mountain, nigga. Mm. It's a difference. So integrity gets no respect in this country. Facts. You understand? All these wicked niggas, they get held up like, yeah, that's, you know what I'm saying? They kings. That's the problem. That's why we're destroyed, man, because the vibration, and, and no, it's crazy. They push that shit, and their kids ain't nowhere near that shit. Facts, yeah, yeah, not their kids. Trapper died, but my son's going to graduate from college, right? He's going to be the warden where your son is at. 
Because mm. my records made him go there. Now he's bowing down to my son. Because I ain't letting him go that route. He ain't getting gang. Mm. I heard niggas say, I don't even use Molly Percocets, but I just put it in songs, you know. Future. Yep. Son, you, you're destroying your own people, bro. You you get in, you know, made a covenant with death. Who's death? You know me, the four horsemen. The mm. one who sat, the one who's, the pale horse. The one who sat on him name was death. Mm. That's why you saw death be the penalty. I had the pale horse and death sitting on him. You, you caught it? Mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, that that's my favorite death. record. That was death. Yeah, that was death. Right, and that's crazy because that's the record that funded CNN. That you know what I mean. Neil Levine took the money from that and signed CNN. So it's a beautiful. It all connects, bro. When you look wow. back, we all had something to do with each other being where we at right now, bro. Wow. There's only a few real ones that that acknowledge it and you know what I'm saying appreciate it. You know, I done helped a lot of people. I know you did too. Forget about it. You've been in this longer than me, so I know you. I know how you get down. You helping me. So I know that's just your nature because I'm the same way. So let me, let me but, ask you something. Did you ever think there would be a time where the record labels was pushing artists that saying they're on demon time? What does that mean? Demon time? Just straight. Everything. <laughs> just straight. Everything destructive. Everything on the left hand side. Because you got spiritual power on the right hand side. And you got the, it's balanced though. Mm -hmm. But see, the whole thing is the media controls how much of the scale goes this way and that way. Mm -hmm. And they got it like this right now. Yeah, yeah. It ain't no positive nowhere. You know what I mean? Like that shit is whack. It's lame if if it's out there. It's drowned out by the negative. You know what I mean? If if you um mm -hmm. if you went into a record label right now um and you had an <laughs> artist and they was talking positive stuff, what do you think the label would say to you? Uh, we need to um. You know, when we get a record like Little Pawn, or they gonna want what's hitting, what's hitting. The labels only want what's selling. They scared to try something new. Mm -hmm. That's the era we came from. When Wu Tang came, brand new. Onyx came, brand new. everything back then. New had a, it was like it was like nothing done before. Mm -hmm. We was trendsetting. You understand? That era is done, son. Mm. One to do it, everybody doing it. Like right now, New York. Everybody doing drill, shot shot town music. Yeah, that's all. Right. And and I was, I, in our town too, in Brooklyn, is that's the biggest. That's thing what I'm saying. Brooklyn don't even sound like like New York no more. What happened to the New York sound? That that's that organic New York sound. The West Coast, I give it to them. They stick to their fucking West Coast. That funk, I, I kind of give them like they stick to it more than anybody else. I think, like mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like style. And down south, they got their own shit too. But I don't know. It's like. From the 90s, because down south wasn't hitting like that in the 90s, I wrote when we came in. Mm. The West Coast had their sound. New York had their sound. It seemed like the West Coast stuck with their sound longer than New York. You know what I mean? It's like New York biting everybody now. They lost their way right now. Why do you think nobody really uh, holds the record labels in the, in the, uh, the executives responsible for pushing this stuff on us? It's money. Mm. They make a covenant with death. And they agree, and they made an oath. See, either you made an oath with the Heavenly Father to do his will and not be afraid of nothing and bang ten toes down for him, no matter what, or you're going to make an oath with, 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 with death, Satan. With these, money is your God. If all of your decisions are based off money, you riding with them, man. Facts. You're going to act like you're riding over here for a little while, but then you're going to look back like Lot's wife, like, yo, you know what? Ain't no fun, ain't no money in being righteous. And if you're not grounded and you're not living your spit, you 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 gonna switch over, bro. How many um how many countries have? Cause cause see, I wanna I wanna change the narrative. I wanna change the narrative of you know dudes being um bitter, broke, and whatever. How many countries have you touched? Yo, I got five passports, bro. S say that again. Oh, say that again. I'm on my fifth passport, bro. <laughs> Y'all niggas be thinking niggas ain't working. I don't, I don't, you don't see me showing cars. Or, I, you ain't going to never see none of that. Mm. You're going to see this jewelry right here. Mm. I rock all of that shit, man. Truck shit and all that. I'm an 88 baby. I got all of that shit. Feel out this, feel out that, all that. I don't care about that. You don't never hear me rhyming like that. It don't matter. That's mm. all vanity. It ain't going in the ground with me. I can't leave that behind. I want to leave something that's going to last behind. Mm. Knowledge, bro. And um, um, how many, how many, how many countries? You said five passports. So how many? Five stamps? passports. I done been to 
put it like this. I've been to every country except Japan, which I had plenty of chances to go. It just never happened. I don't I, I don't mind. Um, like the the Asian market, I didn't touch that. My cousin touched it, then I touched it. Right? So I didn't go to Africa. I had a chance to go a couple of times, Cape Town and all that. It just never happened. It's like hurricanes. It's always something, and I look at it spiritually, so the most high didn't want me over there for some reason. So I'm good. I'm good with that. Mm. But I done been everywhere, bro. You name it, I've been there, bro. Greece, Paris. I got apartments in Switzerland, Paris, Sweden. I got cribs, bro. Wow. I, I got cribs. I don't need no hotel in certain places. I can stay long as I want. I'm good. I got I, I got a Swiss ID in my pocket. I got a, <laughs> I'm a Swiss in the pocket. I'll be seeing y'all be in the supermarket. I see what's her name? Shaka Khan. What's her name? Uh, Tina. Yeah, Shaka Khan. Oh wow! Right there, orange, getting picking oranges. She's sweet. She's a citizen. Mm. Out there, she's like, I gave up my U.S. passport. I said, why? She said, because at first they had me not paying, but now they want me to pay taxes here and there. Mm. So I, I give up there. I can't pay both. I'm not living over there. So I just gave up my U.S. citizenship. Mm. But this was like way back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Before it got real strict. Now, you either just give it up or just visit, get your 90-day visa. And after 90 days, the 90th day, you got to get out or you went past. Mm. The 91st day, when you go to customs, they're going to be like, come with us. <laughs> wow. You, you're supposed to have left, you know what I mean? And you're going you're gonna to have to get in. You're going to have to go through it. How did you uh, risk? You, you, you was at a different um, point in your life, different uh, uh, mind state early on in your life coming in the game. How did you resist yeah. the temptation to run to the money? Well, to be honest, when I first wanted to make a record, I didn't care, never cared about the money, doggy. Mm. I wanted. To, I thought I could change the world. That's why I wanted to make a record. I'm going to change the world. Because I was tired of seeing this shit out. Yo, man, you know what I went through in 88? Yeah. You already know. Yes, yes, Come yes. On, yes. Man. That's why in the grave diggers, I'm the pallbearer. I was ready for grave diggers when that opportunity came up. I was more than ready. <laughs> Shit, I didn't mm -hmm. carry so many goddamn caskets. I was a grave digger all my life. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? I seen the horror all my life. That's all I know. So, I just wanted to change the world. I, I very mad all of my brothers, man. Matter of fact, today makes 32 years. My man Enoch, her, he got shot in the head on Valentine's Day, 1989. It's mm. crazy. Because on Easter Sunday, 89, after the F train, we coming home from the movies, niggas, five Uzis on us, shot all at us, missing us, blah, 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 choo, choo. hit my brother Rod in the head, he, lay, he played dead though, you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. our thing, you get hit, play dead, maybe you got a chance, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He played dead, he beat it, but my man was, my man was with them five. Mm. So he's like, nah, that's my man, Baz. He got behind the tree, started clapping at the niggas he just came with. Mm. And threw them off, and they all ran. That's how he saved our life. Mm. He, he died today, 32 years ago, shot mm. in the head. Valentine's Day. My nigga hurt. Wow. So, so, so how did you, you know, get signed to, to penalty, uh, being on different right. record labels? How did you... Right, so how, this, how, yeah. this is what went, right? I was scientific Shabazz. Okay. Right? But when I started really, really doing the knowledge... Mm -hmm. When I read, when I read uh, what it was, 1 Timothy 2 and 16, mm -hmm. the most I was talking to Timothy saying, like, avoid the um, profane oppositions of science, which, which cause men to err from the God, from the most high. Science makes you go against the most high. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I dropped the science right there. I'm out of here. I'm mm -hmm. done. If you listen to the Wu Tang 36 Chambers, the um, Wu Tang Killer Bees, we on the swamp, Wu Tang. Listen, shouting me out, scientific Shabazz, the Red Hook Mall. He, he talked about it. He said it on that record. Mm. So when I got in, right, my whole idea was to change the world. I didn't care about the bread. I knew the money was going You're pausing a little bit. I'm, um, I'm waiting for you to come back. Coming in. Not just money. Yeah, I had a purpose for coming in the music business, not just for money. So I thought that I could change the world. Mm-hmm. Boom. When all of that temptation, right, I got with RZA, boom. The diary shit blew up. Boom. The business didn't go right. Mm. So I was like, nah, I ain't gonna sit here and go through that. I'm not gonna be, I'm not phony. I'm not, if I got a problem, I'm out. I mm. had a talk, 
We had an agreement and I vouched. Mm-hmm. Raise your hand, them niggas, they stayed. I mm-hmm. didn't leave them. How you gonna say I left you? If if I left you, why you left 13 years later? Mm-hmm. If I left you in a dangerous situation, you're gonna stay 13 years? Let's be honest. Let's just be men. Come oh, on, man. Don't yeah. do that. Stop it. Stop it. You know what I mean? So I got with Killer Priest. I got him on Diary of a Madman. Priest wasn't there when I did that. Mm. I did that. Rizzy Rizzy called me. Yo, 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 come to the studio tonight. I got you. I got some shit you're going to fit on. Yo, I was scared to death, man. I remember that. I'll never forget this day. I walked through Red Hook to the cab stand. I seen my man John. I was like, yo, this is it, man. I got the chance of my life right now. My whole life equals this day right here. He's like, yo, go kill that shit like we fucking know you would, nigga. I got in the cab. I was riding over the Brooklyn Bridge. It was mad foggy. I was just sitting in the back of the cab. I was just thinking of the craziest shit I could think of. Right? So I get to the studio. Rizzo was at the board playing the beat. He played the beat. I looked at the speaker. I looked at Rizzo. I said, give me a paper. Pedro gave me a piece of a pad. I used to write all my rhymes in red ink at that time. Mm. And I didn't even know until later that in the Bible, all red is, is Jesus talking. Mm. So I had a whole bunch of rhyme books with all red. Mm. I was like, wow. So boom. I finished it real quick. Every, he called Fukuan and them in the room. Yo, come on, yo, we going to write to this one. You froze, Baz. Um, you said you said no, Baz. You froze. You you froze, and you said we gonna write to this one. Go from there. Right, Rizzo said we gonna write for, write to this one. He called Fruquan and Poetic and them in the room to to the studio um to the booth. Uh-huh. So we all writing. I was like in two minutes, I was done chilling. I'm sitting there. He's like, yo, yo, you you done? I'm like, yeah, I'm done. He's like, yo, let me hear what you got. I stood up. Put the, I put my book to the heavens and screamed that shit. Mm. Be a witness. Niggas drunk, niggas crumbled their shit and threw it in the garbage and walked out the <laughs> Dead ass. That's, that's your first, Dead two, ass. first two words. That's my first encounter in the music. That's my introduction to the music business, bro. Wow. Um, right? So, boom. Mm-hmm. He's like, yo, go, yo, yo, that's first. Go, go spit that right now. I spit it one time. That's the record y'all like. You know what mm. I said? At birth, nurses surrounded me with needles. Come on, man. Vaccines, man. Mm. Wow. Girl, her name is Maxine. <laughs> yeah, you, your um, your 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 uh, your your um, what you gonna call it? Your your you froze. Yeah, there you go. You back. So you said again. Um, you said again. What was the first two lines? Say that again. Be a witness as I exercise my exorcism. Mm. Right. And they everybody threw they. Crumbled they rhyme up and threw it in the garbage. So he walked so, out the room. So why like, don't go, go spit that? I went in the booth, spit it one time, one take, done. He shut the session down. Everybody took a um, virgin home, and we was calling. He's coming back tomorrow. So the, the next day, I went downtown, Super B Street. You know that, right there uh-huh. by the mall. Yes, I'm yes. On the square. I went downstairs to go buy the Wu Tang record. It just came out. Thirty Six Chambers was out. So I said, let me go get that. Mm. Let, me go, let me go support my brothers. When I get down there, Killer Priest and Dreddy Kruger was down there buying the record too. I was like, yo, I did some shit last night in the studio. Come in and get, get in the car. I had the car right over there. You know, the $5 shit right there. By the, by the Albany Square Mall, the parking lot. The $5 mm. joint all day. I went right in there. Got in the car. Then the Priest jumped out the car. He's like, what the fuck is this? I said, you getting on this. Because at mm. that time, me and Killer Priest was partners. We was the disciples of Armageddon. Oh, so let me tell the people again, you and Killer Priest was a group. Me and Killer Priest was a two-man group called the Disciples of Armageddon. That's wow. where the disciple come from. Mm, oh, wow. We That's what... disciples. Wow. Okay? So now, I brought him to the studio, Killer Priest. The next, that same night, him and Dreddy came with me to Red Hook. We was chilling until I had to go. I was like, yo, I got to go to the studio tonight. You should come and get on this record. Mm. You got to get on this record, Right? So he's like, "Where? Fuck that! I'm, I'm, I'm coming." We got to the studio. Prince Paul was like, "Yo, before we got in the booth, Rizzo and was in there writing and everything. Him, Fukuan, and Poetic. He was like, "Yo, I never saw them work this hard to write a verse. Yo, you fucking killed it." He said, "Everybody want to sign you, yo. You heard?" He mm. said, "Madonna." He said, "Yo, Rizzo played it for everybody. Yo, Madonna, Shia, Warner, they want you. Everybody." He's like, "Rizzo ain't tell you." I was like, "Nah." He said, "All right, let me let him tell you." I was like, "Oh shit!" I was hyped. Mm. I did it. Like, I was, I was like, I did it. Like, you know what I mean? So, um, 
I was like, yo, I want Priest to get on it. So Rizzo got a call. He had to leave. Mm. He left. So he said, yo, yo, leave the session open. I'm coming back. So I was like, yo, please jump on that shit. You got a verse? He got on it. He went second after me first. Killer mm. Priest. I got a cassette with that version. Killer oh, wow. Priest. Rizzo came to the studio. He was like, nah, he got to get off the record. I didn't understand it at the time. Mm. I thought it was some competitive shit. But then I understood it later. Priest was already signed to Jizza Entertainment. So that was a conflict of interest. That wasn't their way they was going to launch him. I got you. I didn't know that. I wasn't stepping on toes or fuck y'all plan. I got a plan for Priest. I didn't know that. When I found out, I understood it. But then what we did in the studio, we had a vote. It was me, Ethan Ryman. That was the engineer from Firehouse. Uh, P Pedro, Mr. Sign, who did Crime Saga Remix and did all the DOA songs that they call in First Testament, Sons of Man. That ain't no Sons of Man album. That was Disciples of Armageddon album. And I brought Razor to get on that. And he brought Prodigal to get on that. And that was the birth of the Sons of Man right there. All right? But, but break, break, now, break that you know, down. So they putting out album calling the Sons of Man, but... Yeah, they, call, they, they bootlegged it and named it the, the, the First Testament, the, the Last Testament, whatever. They, and they was putting all of them songs that me and Killer Priest, that was our album. Mm. Okay, and, and and we featured Hellraiser and Prodigal on two songs because I had Razor with me every day. Priest had Prodigal with him every day. So of course we're gonna introduce our family on a joint or two. We mm. did one, the shit came out dope. We was like, let's do another one, and then we was like, oh shit, this sound like a whole new group. We just started some new movement right there. Mm. So do the boom, the name came up. Prodigal threw the name in the air. We ran with it, Sons of Man, right? So me and Priest not being selfish. Push DOA to the side, push Sons of Man first. Mm. So all of us could be on stage. Because we was already blown up from diary. Yeah. So it wasn't about us. And then but if we would have see, if we would if we would have just went with the way we was going, because after we did the diary, Rizzo mm. produced this shit called Holy's Planet. Me and Killer Priest did. <laughs> That's where Nas got his whole his whole fucking um as it is um written from right there. He heard that demo, changed his whole religion, changed his whole shit. Straight up. So Nas heard y'all demo? Yes. He heard the demo and he flipped out. Mm. I seen that nigga at the fucking Puck building, Funk Master Flex show. He was like, yo, oh man, yo, you a legend. I was like, yo, you, you a legend. Mm. He's like, yo, we got to collab. No doubt. We never collab. Mm. Never collab. But you know what's crazy? While well, I was in Switzerland, me and Killer Priest had a tour. It's mm -hmm. me and him. Boom. I got out there two days early because Silver Rings had flew me out so I could record. I got with these dudes, God's Rap. Mm -hmm. My nigga's God's Rap from Amsterdam, right? Boom. I did 16 songs in two days. I was clobbering shit. I was mm -hmm. badass, right? So when Priest landed, I was like, yo, I did 16 songs in two days. He's like, yo, you should name that the album. I was like, yo, I want to introduce you to my man. To them. These niggas is nice. God's Rap. I brought him to their crib. Introduced him. He was telling me on the bus on the way there, yo, I got this idea, black market. You know what I'm saying? I want you. I'm, 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 he said, I'm gonna do, it's going to be me, you, Nas, tragedy. I was like, let's go. Mm. He said, it's going to be a whole bunch of us. We're going to murder this shit. I said, let's do it. I introduced him. I said, I got the perfect producers for that. Brought him to their crib. I don't know what happened. Them niggas is in New York already recording 30th Street, Green, the Green Door, you know. Yes, sir. Bro, in the studio Next right to there. downtown, there yep. There you go. Downtown studio, right? I mean, on um, club, the club. Yes, it was mm -hmm. a club downtown. Right? It was called downtown. Studio. Right, and Rogue on the 10th floor right there, the Green Door, 30th Street. So niggas is hitting me, yo, where you at, Baz? Yo, we've been out here a week. Why you ain't showing up? What's going on? Nigga, I didn't even know y'all was here recording. What you talking about? I felt I felt some type of way right there. <laughs> er, I felt funny right there. That was funny. How y'all all record? I was part of the first idea. Introduce the producers. They out here. Y'all out here for a week and a half already working, and nobody told me nothing. Now they hitting me like, "Yo, what's up, Baz? You you ain't showing up. What's going on? You 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 don't want to work? You don't want to fuck with us?" I was like, "Yo, I didn't even know y'all was out there." Whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't even, you know, stress none of that. Whatever. If that, if that, if that could go, if that goes in a positive direction, may may so happen. Um, how come you never I did really... a, lot, a lot? Yeah, yeah how come I did a lot, a lot? I'm gonna tell you something else, doggy. You don't even know. Go ahead. You might like this one. 
Death beat a penalty and five archangels was the same session, fourth disciple. Wow. Same night. We did both. No, you did, did tell me. I'm about to tell you the story. I'm about to five, tell you. Huh? I'm about to tell you the story. You did death beat a penalty. Right. You did the first verse and you wanted priests on it. He was like, nah, I can't get on that. Priest? Death beat a penalty was gonna be a Sons of Man song. We all took the beat home to write to it. We came back to the studio. We did Five Buck Angels. This is when Killer Priest introduced 60. Cause we was already recording without 60 wasn't there when I was mentioning me, Priest, Razor. You froze. Are we froze going... up again? Go ahead, go ahead. You froze real quick. Go ahead, say something. Go ahead. Okay, I said, yeah, you can hear yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Yeah. So he wasn't in the picture when me and Priest was doing our DOA for Atlantic Records. We was doing our project for Atlantic Records. Right? Mm. So when we introduced Prodigal and Razor, 60 wasn't there yet. So we mm. already had like seven, eight songs already, right? Featuring two of them with um, Pre Priest and, I mean, Razor and Prodigal was featured on two of the songs. Mm -hmm. But me and Priest had like eight We was eight songs in. So when we did five, when it was time to do Forbes beats, we had Five Rock Angels and Death Beat a Penalty. We mm -hmm. was all supposed to write both of them. We came to the studio. We did we did we did Five Rock first. And he brought 60 and we he drew he that's when I first met 60. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, this was used to be my partner way back. You know what I mean? Art of War, they was called or something like that. And he's like, yo, I wanted to bring him in because I think he fit with, you know, with the, with what we doing right here. I want to bring him in. Mm -hmm. I bet. Let him go first. Give, show him some love. Let him go first on the joint so he can shine, right? Mm -hmm. He did um, Five Rock Angels. He killed it. Killed yeah, it. Yeah, facts. Right? So we finished the song. Now it's time to pull up Death Beat the Penalty Beat. So I'll go first. Energy striking the enemy. Death Beat the Penalty. Niggas crumbled their shit, threw it in the garbage, and walked out. <laughs> The second time that happened. So now, I'm like, yo, get on. Yo, priest in the, nah, nigga, you killed it. Ain't nothing else you can say. You mm -hmm. killed it. You said everything. And that was just the first verse. So Killer Priest's cousin, Kev, that was me and Killer Priest's manager. Mm -hmm. But he a singer too. So this is how this happened. He had the, he had the, a copy of the demo too, right? Mm -hmm. So... His sister was going to the Port Authority to go down south to South Carolina to kill a priest's mom's crib down mm -hmm. south it, when she was living over there, right? So on, it, it's right around the corner from, from Firehouse, right? Penalty Records, it wasn't no such thing. It was around the globe, assault. It wasn't even a label. It was a record pool. All the labels used to send them their records and they promoted and get it on the Gavin and to the radio stations. CMJ they and all that, yep. They, were, they wasn't a label yet. So Cab was, he dropped his sister off at the Port Authority. Who's walking on the block? Martin Moore. So he's like, oh shit, what up, Martin? He's like, yo, man, I'll be listening to your song, your own radio show. What's good, bro? He's like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm a and R for this new, you know, we, we, we trying to get this new label getting ready to start. And I'm, ch I'm checking out some groups. That's why I be playing certain records on the radio. I'm, I'm checking out certain groups. I'm, I'm checking out some guys. He's like, yo, get me. He's like, where you going? Fire, where you going? Um, firehouse block? He said, I got you. He jumped in. He said, I want to play something for you. He played that one verse, Death Be the Penalty. Mm. He was like, no, oh, that's bad? He's like, yeah. From the Grave Diggers? Hell yeah. He said, yo, I play that all the time. He said, yeah, that's him. He doing his solo shit. He's like, yo, yo, bring that upstairs right now to my man. So they went upstairs across the street from Firehouse. They mm. went upstairs. Boom. He played it for Neil. Neil was like, yo, I want to sign it. Mm. Right? So he's like, bring him to my office Monday. So he called me. He's like, yo, Baz, I got these niggas that might want to put your shit out. He's like, yo, you remember Martin Moore? I was like, yeah, no. He's like, yeah, they, they're getting ready to try to start a label now. I was like, oh, okay, let's, let, let's sit down and talk. Boom. I went up there. He played that song. We played that. And he was like, what else you got for the other side? So I, I freestyled. He signed me right there. I was mm -hmm. like, yo, I need a deal. I, I, don't, I don't only need a solo deal. I need a deal for my crew, too. He's like, whatever you need. He was giving me two deals. Mm. Them niggas said fuck bads. I ain't moving. Okay. I, I just long as I ain't like I said, long as I ain't back in the hood on that dumb shit, and I ain't got to worry about you know what I'm saying crying over caskets again. So when you care. signed, when you signed, it wasn't it wasn't called Penalty Records at the time. No, this is how that went, right? He was like, yeah, man, Neil. He was like, yo, you can ask him, ask Neil Levine. Forget all these niggas. Go right to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. 
I said, yo, he said, yo, that be the penalty. She passed it. I said, yo, name the penalty records. He said, yeah, that's it. I like that. He said, death, death be the penalty, penalty records. He said, I'm going to the meeting tomorrow with Tommy Boy. I'm going to get the distribution. He mm -hmm. came back. Yo, I got it. Penalty records. I should have fucking been on my business shit, man. Got <laughs> to own some of that shit. Back then. I ain't care about the money. I was doing it for the love and just the culture and the, you know what I mean? Like, like nobody taught me this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had to learn trial by error, like oh, most of us. You know, um, we get it. We get it now. We understand it now. Let me ask you something. Um, when you see these artists uh killing each other or just <sighs> dying, and then they're disrespectful, like, yo, I'm smoking on a such and such pack. What do, what, what comes to mind when you hear that? Y'all niggas is here. See, the labels are only signing y'all to destroy the youth. The youth idolize and look up to whoever they see on TV as God. Mm. If you're on TV, you're God. I, I didn't heard my nieces say, we rich, just because they saw a video on fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. like what's the name? Um, video, um, Vid Kid. Mm. <laughs> they saw the video, oh, we rich, we did it, yes. It's like God, that's God up there. Like, I seen that as when they was little. So I see the impact that it has on them. So I understand how they weaponized it to destroy us now. They see how we was, we was like the era we got it from was building us up mentally, spiritually, giving us self-esteem, giving us something to love each other for, giving us, yo, let's build, let's get together, let's link up. Nah, nigga, this is too powerful. We, if, man, if we let this shit keep going, they'll chase us back to the fucking Caucasus Mountain. We gotta fuck this shit down. Yeah. We gotta shut this down. We gotta fucking do something. And somebody came with that great idea. I got it. All we gotta do is put an A and R there. He controls what kind of music. These niggas are so broke. All you gotta do is flash a few dollars. They gonna do whatever you say. And that's the hip hop right now. They got it down to a science where they even putting hits on the artist now. As soon as, like I said, as soon as the album is done, he's not even he's not even here to see his fucking success. Bro. Word, yo, a lot of dudes dropped albums dead. Dead. Nipsey, yeah. uh, damn, we it's could like, go. It started with pop. It started yeah. with pop. Mm. It started with pop, and they said, "Yo, we own to something." That was like the test. Oh shit, this nigga went double without being. Oh, we we got him. We gonna make a contract where they they they, they we're the beneficiaries if something happened to them. The whole estate goes to us. Get rid of these niggas, and then all the money comes. They cashing out, bro. So look, yeah. so so so, uh. Tupac, I ain't mad at you video. He was dead. Biggie yeah. was dead by his second album. Nipsey yeah. was dead when his album that. came out. Uh, that shit was spooky when it came out. Yeah. Uh, 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 that's what should I call it? That shit is spooky. Yeah. Pop Smoke was dead when his album came out. Who's that? Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke? Yeah, his album, he was dead when his album. Double. He already went double, real quick. Crazy. You see that? It's crazy. They're not even here to, to enjoy their success with their family, their kids, nothing. It's all set up, son. It's all set up. But wow. you know, it's all it's all it's all according to the prophecies, man. Like I've been when I was on this show a couple of times ago, not the last one. The last one I think we was just clearing up the razor uh -huh. nonsense. Um so I was I was breaking down all the prophecies. You know, and back, you know, I've been doing it for 15 years and I'm, yo, I'm crazy, yo, you're crazy, you're a conspiracy theorist. Okay, so let's go down the checklist real quick. Real quick, we told y'all that uh, it was going to be uproars around the world, right? And that's like signs of his coming. Check. Look at, look at France. Look at all of them countries over there wilding out against their government. Matter of fact, it said there's going to be sedition among men and they're going to be invading each other and they are not going to regard their kings or princes. What is kings and princes when you read that in the Bible? King is presidents, rulers. And then you got the, the, the princes, the, 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 the uh, senators, the governors, the mayors, the, the smaller rulers. OK, didn't they just raid the capital? Mm -hmm. That's check. Right. You see, the, you see earthquakes in diverse places. There was earthquakes in Brooklyn, Jersey, where there's not <laughs> normally an earthquake. Check. Um, you, there was famine. I seen them chasing the, um, the sanitation truck in Venezuela. These niggas out here is hungry, too. Check. <laughs> they said it's going to be it, it has gone on. a man shall rifle your house with the sword in the lack in, in during the tribulation because of the lack of bread. 
and, and spoil your goods. That means there's going to be armed robberies in your house, home invasions. You see that right now in Brooklyn, in New York, Queens. Check. You, there's going to be pestilence. What's the COVID-19? Pestilence. What pestilence means? Diseases. Check. Like, you want me to keep going? <laughs> I told you the check was coming, right? I told you, look, the money is going to go digital right now. Bitcoin is next, and then it's going to be the microchip. They're already getting you used to swiping. You, you ain't got to go in your pocket no more. You just got to swipe. Swipe this, swipe that. All of the technology is leading towards you swiping. Then it's going to be your hand. Okay, you swipe in a card right now, but it's going to be your hand in a second. Okay, you don't see the okay check. I told you that it said uh, Solomon said three thousand years ago the grinding is going to cease. We talking about we grinding today. Yo, son, I'm grinding, son, I'm on my grind. He said the grinding shall cease. All the doors will be shut in the streets. All the businesses are shut down, right? Check. Come on, bro. You want me to keep going? The missiles, the nuclear missiles, the World War Three. You don't see that? The wars and rumors of war. Kim Jong Un. Stay beefing with America, threatening them. That's rumors of war. Mm. They threatening to bomb Syria and Iran right now. Matter of fact, they bombing Syria. Wars and rumors of war. Check. You want me to keep going? Mm. Yeah, yeah, let me keep going, matter of fact. Because after that, it said, and these are the beginning of sorrows. That's Matthew, only Matthew 24, 6 and 7. Now, 8 said the beginning of sorrows. You know what 9 said? Then brother shall deliver up brother to be put to death. So that's the word. I call it the plague of rodents. That's the rat season. The hood is the garden of Gethsemane, man. Look. Mm. look this is Gethsemane. I got the t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? And I got the hoodies. Gethsemane. Gethsemane, man. You know what Gethsemane is? For those who know and who don't know, let me tell you what it is. The garden of Gethsemane is where you call him Jesus, went to pray with his disciples. Right when Judas brought the Roman centurions, to come and arrest him. Okay? How did they know? They said, how are we going to know it's him? He said, when you see me kiss him, that's him. That's where the mafia kiss come from, on both cheeks. Mm. Romans, Italians, message. The hood is going to get Gethsemane right now, man. You know who your Judas are? I got 12, man. I know who all of them are. They all lift up their head and show me who they are. They expose themselves. I ain't have to say nothing. Just be me and do righteous things I do and just sit back. It revealed itself. You know, y'all know who my Judas is. I got twelve of them. Y'all, y'all know who who most of them are already. Mm. Right? You when we when this video started, you told me that most of the time mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. cover your camera with a magic marker. Let them know why you do that. <clears throat> you gotta give me a second. Give me a second. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. My bad, dog. Yeah, yeah. You told me. Um, you, <laughs> you, you said you cover your camera with the magic marker. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why do I you do that? Yeah, every time I get a computer, I take a black magic marker and I I, I color the the, the <laughs> camera and then I put black tape on it. I only move this black tape to the side for my brother Doggy Diamonds today. Yeah, he pulled the tape off. <laughs> I pulled the tape off. I, I pulled. I, I scratched off the cereal real quick yeah, for my yeah. brother. Yeah. <laughs> why do you do that? Yeah, because I don't, you know, they be watching you. You know what I'm saying? You got the smart TVs and all that, smart, all of that. Even the new cable boxes, they watching you, my nigga. Even when you cut it off, they watching you. They watching you have sex with your girl, all that. They listening. They can hear and see everything. And then, you know, this is how they gather in their intel. Mm. So when they come in, death be the penalty. Mm. If they got enough on you, because Gethsemane is, Gethsemane is like the, the land of where snitches is at. And if you look at the t-shirt and the, and, the, and, the, um, and the hoodies, I got the I got Red Hook Projects. I got mm -hmm. the helicopters, the Huey helicopters. I got the tanks. You got the soldiers on the roof. All of that. Big up to my man, Hugh, from Australia. And shout out to my man, Ed Nards, my producer from Australia. We got a project coming. I can't tell y'all the name because y'all niggas be stealing. Facts. Don't say nothing. Nothing. Yeah, because I got a new show that I'm about to launch. Crazy, don't too. Nothing. I don't, don't say, say nothing. nothing. Yeah, I nothing. don't say nothing. You already so, know. So, um, did you ever think, I mean, we had, uh, we, I, I could say, well, we was able to pinpoint the raunchiness of women, because I know you can't stand that shit, too. <laughs> so oh, I want to go into he, that. He's like DMX ad-libs now. Yeah, how, how, the, how, the, how the record labels even weaponize the women, the women. to be yeah. harlots. Facts. Speak on that. Facts. And you went from you went from Lauren Hill to Cardi. 
Come on, bro. <laughs> With no in between, you didn't even build us up, get us ready for that. You just got. You froze. You froze. So Destroyed I'm... us through the civil rights movement. Uh huh. Go ahead. They, 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 it was never like that. Boss bitch, give a fuck about a nigga. They divided and conquered us, man. The scripture mm -hmm. said that her eyes shall be evil towards her husband of her bosom and towards her children who came between her feet. Mm -hmm. And and the father's eyes shall be evil towards his wife and his children whom he shall leave. The scriptures tell you it's gonna be single households. And it's gonna be my baby mama drama and baby daddy drama. It's written, bro. You cannot escape the prophecies. I don't care who you are, who you <laughs> believe in, what you believe in. This book is never going to be wrong. And I'm going to be here to keep reminding you. Check. I'm going to go down the list every time you're ready. Check. Check. I'm going to tell you what to get ready for. Go ahead. Dark winter. Mm, what does that mean? You, you know what Biden, you know what Biden means and Kamala means? You know what those two names mean? Go ahead. Biden means button. Kamala means mark. The last two prophecies before Yahweh Shai come and get us is the mark of the beast, the microchip. And they hitting that button, letting the missiles go. Mm. We have to end. And this is a Gardenian pact because what you're witnessing is Eve and the serpent at the end. Still here to alley you our destruction. Since the garden, he put the woman in front. He didn't want to deal with the man. He always X's us out. The black man is just a piece of shit in this country. He, he's, uh, he's X out of every equation. You see too. You froze. You froze. So let me, let me wait till you come back. Goddess of fertility. Go ahead. Say that again because yeah. you froze. What'd you say? What'd you say, Baz? You froze. I said, I the last thing I said, I don't know the last thing. Um, you said something about uh the black man is 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 froze out. Yeah, of he's everything. always X out. Yeah, the, the black man is always X out of the equation in America. Mm. They because they know we the dominant gene. We the gods. You understand? Mm. We we the um Psalm 82 and 6. I told y'all y'all was gods, but y'all sons of the God. And y'all gonna die like men, like one of the princes. We got that God, like we we the made in the image of the most high. Nobody can't do nothing. We the best at everything. Mm. I, don't get, I don't care what arena you put us in. We're going to dominate, baby. But mm. we got the spirit of the Heavenly Father. The dominance. And that's why everybody's jealous of us. If you look at sports, right? Look how look how, look how how they created it. It's like football. You know where football come from? Hmm. When they had the Native Americans and they came here and slaughtered them and took the land, they had chopped the women's breasts off and sew it together and play catch. Don't wow. you see a football? Two ends of the titty and a, and a, and a thread. <laughs> wow. All right? And wow. then you kick it through her legs. You kick the ball through her up and put her legs up. Field goal. Wow. Score. Okay? All of that shit. Like the, 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 um, the, the fucking baseball. They throwing up Mason. The back catcher throws up Masonic symbols to the catcher. Facts. Tell them what pitch to throw. That whole shit looked like the two fucking... The, um, the, 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 um, the fucking Masonic, um, the, the 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 perpendicular to the square, mm. first base, second base, third base. That's the fucking Masonic symbol. All right, you want to go into clothes? You want to go? To, you know what they used to do? They used to take two slaves, tie them to the tie one over here to the horse, um, to a horse, tie the one on that side to the horse, and it'll be two slave masters with whips. They'll hit the horse. The horses will go the opposite direction and rip the man in the hat. You know Wait, that? Levi's, right? Levi's. Levi, you know. To your Levi's. And what does Levi mean in um biblical term? Levi is 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 um the lawyer, the lawyer. That's the Haitians. Levi. Moses was a Levite. He's mm. the lawyer. Didn't the Lord give him the laws? The lawyer knows the laws. Levites. Mm. The Haitians. If Moses was here, he'd be a Haitian. You'll call him a nigga. Wow. Okay. Timberland. You got the tree, and then the shoestrings look like the noose. <laughs> Holy Shabazz is on fire tonight. Yo, I, I Doggy. love it. Doggy, you yeah. know I'll be holding it for you, bro. Nah, nah. This this you but, already know. But but um and thank you for letting me go here. You know what I mean? Like what I love about Doggy Diamond is no filter TV. This is the honest truth. Yes. You don't feel like you in court. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, you ain't going to jail after this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't, ain't no charges coming after that. 
I don't want to hear all of that, man. It's the only place where I can feel I can get it in, man. Yo, you know what? what you know what tripped me out because they created the um the stink bugs, right? Mm -hmm. To get rid of the um the mosquitoes, right? Yeah. It ain't that like the locusts? Like they can't get rid of yeah. them now. No, nah, you can't because they yeah. got a million. They just let loose a million uh uh um robot mosquitoes. They got drones, mice. They got animals. You probably got a lot of mice and roaches. Them niggas is recording devices too, my nigga. Mm. Trust me, I seen this movie. I forgot it was an old movie. It's like you know how they do them nineteen fifty black and white movies. They do them over in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Yo, I, it's this movie. It was in London. It was the CIA dude. He knew too much. He quit and was telling on them. They chasing him. He in the woods running. Yo, they had flies. It was they eyes was the camera. The antennas was the um, the, 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 the reception. They had rats, rodents. All kinds of animals trying to get at this dude. They sent a snow machine. I was like, damn, they just let it all out. How mm. we miss this? And this was a 96 film. Mm. And we just finding out about the harp and all that. Like, yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah. They weaponized everything, man. They weaponized the food. Everything you eating is plastic. You know what I'm saying? They, yo, know, right now you get $1,500 fine if you go on a bus or the train without a mask. Now you're getting $1,500 fines. So they got it where, like I said, this is Gethsemane because now, if you don't wear a mask, you're selfish. You, 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 not only you're trying to kill yourself, you're trying to kill others. So now everybody's going to rat on you now. Mm. You, this is the time where everybody's going, oh, he don't got no mask. Oh, yeah, he didn't get the vaccine. <laughs> and watch out because they got this new bill. It's called the, um, the, uh, the Assembly Bill, New York Assembly Bill. It's the A416. Google it. A416 assembly bill. Look up New York. It's telling you that the military is going to go door to door. And whoever they deem a health problem, they snatching y'all up, concentration camps, FEMA camps, separating you and your kids, man. That's coming. Mm. While y'all dancing and celebrating, y'all don't even know what these niggas are signing. Y'all don't even know what he about to do. Dark winter is coming. You take that, you know what I'm saying? You take that jab, hey. Mm -hmm. It's gonna separate you from the. It's gonna separate. It's gonna destroy your guard gene. It's gonna mm -hmm. deplete your serotonin, right? You ain't gonna have no spiritual connection. Your third eye, your pineal gland is done. Zap. Now they got your your whole conscience on a on a cloud, and they can control your emotions and your thoughts through a computer, bro. Mm. That means you're a vessel for destruction. The Lord can't use you no more. He can't connect with you no more. You're through. You're through. Um, real quick, Baz, we got 1,300 people in the room. We only have 400 likes. Could everybody hit that like button? I need everybody to hit that like because, um, you know, that, that's what make videos like this go up in the algorithm and go viral. I need everybody to hit that like. If we could get to 1,000 likes, that would be perfect. 1,000 likes. But, yo, so let me, let me, let me ask you. Um, I want, I want to go back to this because this is very, very important. Right now, um, for a man, um, that's, that's courting a woman or think about, uh, uh, you know, dealing with a woman. How do we, <laughs> how do we deal with women? If so many women right now is just going for that WAP right now that, you know, they, yeah, they, the they, they're about the that WAP. Yeah. The scriptures tell you how to deal with the woman. It's, it's just simple. It's like, see, when you get with a woman, if she don't go the way you want to, if you are giving her righteous instructions, how to be, how to keep the relationship healthy, just how healthy, just the whole situation, just healthy, trying to teach her righteousness. If she don't want to hear that, let her go, give her a bill of divorcement, and she shall leave without money. Mm. So what's alimony? Everything that this place do is against the book. Mm. That's why it's out of, out of order right now. It's, it's, everything is backwards. It's, it's out of order right now. Everything. Everything. Everything that they say is legal to do, the most high said thou shall not do. And when you do it, this is why everybody's dying. This is why death is reigning. Poverty is reigning. We in, we on the bottom because the curses. As long as we keep breaking the laws, we're going to be under the curses. And they're going to be over us, ruling all the other nations. That's, that's what you're seeing. That's why they said the laws are done in the way with. Because that's the trick to keep us at the situation we're in. And he said, no, in the last, the last, our curse was we should be brought to Egypt again on ships and sold as bondmen and bondwomen to our enemies. One dollar, two dollar, auction and blocks, man. Mm. 
You call it NBA draft and NFL draft, same thing. Yeah, facts. Facts, yeah, because I don't know if we a lot of people strong, ever seen the strong, NFL combine. We got, we got a strong black one right here. Yeah, so they, the they measure Cowboys. your arms, they measure your legs, they measure your neck. Oh. That's that's arm, yeah. Arm head. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. <clears throat> right. Right now. Uh. How do you raise your um, your children? According to the scriptures, I just tell them make sure you do what's right in the eyes of the heavenly Father, and He's gonna protect you. I got you. If I make it, y'all make it. But y'all gotta do y'all part. Just God right. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to the TV. My kids hate all of that. They're like, ah, oh, that's whack. I want to hear that real hip hop that daddy and them be doing. I don't like MTV. They train my little ones. The older ones, eh, you know, they kind of dib and dab, but they on point too because the spirit is in them already. Mm. You gotta you gotta raise them according to righteousness. The scriptures is a is a righteous instruction book. Okay, that's why it's that's why it's out of out of control out here, bro. It's no righteousness, bro. You know, you go to church, they telling you, oh, you can come as you are. You can be a oh, bro. you can be a uh, rainbow. You can be whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me, what is the difference between righteousness and wickedness? Then? Wickedness then? Mm -hmm. What do you use to measure and separate the two? Mm -hmm. So, you, all right, in other words, a prophet who's fighting and ten toes down, banging, putting his life, freedom, and everything on the line every day for righteousness gets the same the same reward at the end as a nigga who chopped his nuts off and playing soccer against your daughter. Damn. Holy. Deuteronomy chapter twenty three verse one tells you about the transformers, man. Mm. An abomination. They're not gonna be in the congregation of the heavenly father. The scriptures tell you all this. It prepared you for all of this. But that's the number one they made you don't want to even hear about that book. 90% of the people who talk about that book negative never read it. Why do you I think why do you think it's so important for Biden to push that agenda first? That's like one of the first things he signed when he got in. Look who's behind him. Who started it? Obama, baby. Facts. As soon as he got in, he signed it and legalized it. He's just pushing his agenda, finishing it. He's mm. finishing his agenda. That's why he's back there. He promoted him. You saw how they used him as a celebrity and made everybody vote for this dude? Plus, you had the other factor. Everybody hated Trump. They didn't give a fuck who else was. Yeah, yeah. They would have They would have got a, a, a golden calf. In. Just yeah. like in, they did that in Rome. They narrowed down the race to just two. That means they chose who they want for you. Mm. You you thinking you getting the lesser of the two evils? That nigga's worse than um, Trump. Mm. I'm going to tell you how. Righteousness. Trump banned abortions. Mm. Abort, uh, Biden just reinstated it. Mm. Message. Abortion is a holocaust, bro, of, our, of the black Latino child, bro. That's that, our nation getting abortion, the, 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 the rainbow coalition, <laughs> the yeah. transport. All of that is, is, is non-producing. We dying off, too. Mm. Um, for the people uh, that want to stay in contact with you, do you have uh, do you have Instagram? Yes. Do you do Instagram too much? Yeah, I'll be on it. Okay, give them your Instagram. Do I don't do live and all that. I, yeah. I, I, I'm on it though. Shabazz the disciple. Okay. Um, you probably don't have no room on um uh, uh on you oh, don't have. See the the you said what? The picture. The the crime saga cover. The red. Could could so yeah. so for the people who might could you break down what crime saga meant to you because I think people probably think they really think that that was a uh, a uh, a uh, 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 ode to to the streets and all that and you was really no, no, no. what it was right what it was was me coming from my life or perspective when you go to jail and you around a brother who got six life sentences Larry Hoover's and extra etc. They're not telling you go home and bust your gun and just tear, tear it up out there. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you, yo, you got another chance, brother. Do something right with your life. Right? So what I did was I didn't want to glorify it. I wanted to horrify it. Mm. I didn't want to talk about all the fly cars, the feline, this and all of that that niggas had. I ain't talk about that. I talk about the broken homes, the kid growing up with no pops, meeting his father the first time up north. Mm. See, he doing 25. He doing three. He meet his father in there. His mother is, in, is slamming, you know what I'm saying, with that needle in her, in her arm. 
He don't got no chances. He don't got nothing out here. The, 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 the niggas he look up to is the niggas who got that fly shit, right? Mm -hmm. But that's a trap. Because when you go back, come on, man, how that shit get here? Mm -hmm. Nobody saw the shit until it got in my pocket. Fact. <laughs> how the fuck did you get all the way over here? From over there. Five, seven thousand miles away. So it was a trap. <laughs> so so um yeah so also um a lot of people don't know uh we have 1400 almost 1500 people in the building now 700 likes we need them likes to get to a stack before we yeah go. my thing is you know back, the difference between shabazz the disciple 50 cent snoop dog biggie we all seen the same thing came mm -hmm. up with the same opportunities available to us we seen everything the same. Same era, same age group, same everything, right? They hard, they glorify it. Mm. I horrify it. Mm. I try to scare the youth away from it. I'm gonna show you the severity, extreme danger of getting involved. Mm. And if I scared you away, you know what's the crazy? You know when I knew I did my job with that record specifically? Mm. When I met Fat Joe. When I met Fat Joe, you know what he said to me? He right. said, yo, back, man. I was with Ray Rizzo and him. He's like, yo, Baz, man, I got to hug you, man. He said, yo, man, that crime saga shit, he said, yo, that shit made me want to repent. You made me feel bad for all the shit I was doing in the streets, my nigga. I said, damn, Joe, I did my job, baby. He said, you did well. I'm gonna keep it, bro, but I'm going to keep it real, though. That dude always he say, but, but keep it real, though. He always say all types of shit. I don't, I don't believe that. He said he don't know you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't believe shit that come out of his mouth. I'm just keep it real. Nah, but this was like 90, this was like 95. Oh, he before he, before he, uh, yeah. Yeah, when okay. Pastor Flex was just starting to play it. Yeah. He said that. That's when I met Pun, too, like around that same time. Got gotcha. you. No, I, I met Pun a little later, a little bit later. But gotcha. I met Fat Joe earlier. Got you. So, um, before we go, what's next for you? What you got going on? Right now, I got a project with my brother and Nards out in Australia, producer. We got you. You um, you fr you freezing up? Hold on, hold on, one second. Hold on, hold on. Say that. Say that. Say that all over. Hold up. You 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 fr you froze. Start again. You got a project? What? Uh -huh. Okay, with my brother Ed Nards. Okay. From, from Australia, Sydney, Australia, my producer over there. Okay. Crack. The artwork almost done, you'll be seeing and hearing that in a minute, right? Then I got another project, the artwork almost done. My man in Italy doing the artwork, but my partner, Abel, you know what I'm saying? Abel's label out in Sweden. He in Berlin right now. That's my brother. Love that brother, man. You know what I'm saying? He's just like us. And me and him, we got a project. And we got two videos done. And my, my, my director, Jeremy Mack from Cali, he shot the videos. Plus, me and him got a DVD. That's like 99% done. Debo in it. You know what I'm saying? I got Debo in it. Quoting mm. scripts. He's on point with the most high, too. Debo. So, um, you got you got Rizzo, Jizzo, Rock the Bells, Primo, Bob D. Everybody's in that one. But it's more like, like that's the hip-hop side, because it's, it's combined with prophecies, mm -hmm. but it's also, it's also like hip hop events that, uh, that that I was on with my brother when I was in Cali that whole run. Mm -hmm. And he came to Brooklyn and we filmed out here. So and then I got another DVD, but we we you know done yeah. with that one. Did so you ever, did, did you ever put out the DVD I, I was on? I got mad other projects, but I don't want to yeah. say no names, say the titles. Did you ever um did you ever put the DVD out that I was on? No, that's the other one. Remember okay. that's not not yet. Got you. Okay. And good looking for that. That well, was crazy. Well, look, my my appearance is a little more updated. That was the we... last day of that. That was the last day of that. Um, your your your, your um your family living right there. Uh, fact, the fact. Yeah. So we we could keep that. Right. But being that my appearance updated again, can we do the? Right. Let's do it over. Let's do let's do that for the over. Yeah, let's do All it. Right, no, keep no that. More. Keep that. But let's let's update. Some I can more. give it. I can give it to you, and you tell me what to do. Now I, I know I'm gonna look different. You know what I'm saying? I look a little. You know. I, 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 I was, nah, you know, all right, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, right yeah. now, you're looking 16. I get it. I yeah, get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we could we could build all night, but I want the people I just, to... Sorry, dog. Sorry, dog. Oh, I'm sorry for promote, what? I got to promote my little sister, man. Go ahead. Let, do let, you. Do you. Go ahead. Letitia Collins, man. She got a movie. You know what I'm saying? The story of... Nene, of um, I forgot it. Go to mm -hmm. Kick It Live Productions 
Instagram.com to the website. She's on Instagram also. She got movies, books. She ain't playing. She coming with it. She about to come to Red Hook. We about to do this Red Hook story um, movie too. So we're going to collab on that work too. So what I want to happen is that for the people to follow you and then they'll get all of this info and everything you got going on mm -hmm. uh, straight from you. So what I'm going to do, Baz, um, you know, I appreciate you um, always. You yeah. know, me, like I said, me and you, this, this is one of our phone conversations. Again, this is yeah, stuff we exactly. talk about all the that's, time. That's my, I'm just getting to see my brother and talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what we always be, be talking about and building about. And um, right, this right. is one of the men that we might get on the phone <laughs> and be on the phone. And look, yo, we've been on the phone for seven hours and the phone just yeah. died. Remember, <laughs> it's time the phone just died. Like, died. You know, yeah, just died talking. So, died. um. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sign you out. Thank you for coming through it. Um, and yes, um, sir. I'll build with you later on. But yes, what sir. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure the first comment pinned here is your Instagram, so they can follow you and stay in tune with you. Facebook too. I'm on Facebook too. You probably don't Gabe have no room for Facebook on your on your on okay. your real name, right? Like, you know, Shabazz the disciple, gave it college. Got early. you. Got you. But yeah, all right. So thank you, Baz. I will build with you later Salute. on. All Peace. Right. Yep. All right. Bella, yep. Holla, Sean, Rozelle the Great. Yo, you, you, you do your shout-outs before we go. If you got any more to shout-out, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I want to say, I want to say happy born day and many more to my little cousins in Philly, Bella and King Sean. Okay. Yo, Uncle Rozelle, love you, boy. You already. Got you. All right, so, um, yeah, I'll be with you later on, Baz. All right, peace. Peace. All right, so, yo, yeah, um, I brought on Shabazz the Disciple, as promised, and, uh, Again, man, you know what? <clears throat> I just keep it real with y'all. I got to keep it real with my audience real quick. Shout out well, to man. everybody who subscribed. Shout out to everybody who hit that bell for the notification. Shout out to everybody who donates. Shout out to everybody who comes here, right? But what I need right now is is, is, is I'm going to ask for a little bit more, right? I'm going to ask for these videos to be shared, these videos to be liked, and these subscribers to go up because the information that's coming forth from myself, my channel, and others who I bring on my channel, I feel like it's, it, it, it's not being, um, this gotta be out to the masses. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this, we need a little bit more than just us. We need this there, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm bringing, I'm, I'm bringing more people, you know what I'm saying? Like this, this don't stop. And when you see when they, when people come on my channel, I let them go. You know what I'm saying? You could go. Whatever, whatever's in your spirit, whatever's in your heart, whatever's on your mind, go. I'm not stopping you. You know what I'm saying? So we need to make, I know a lot of people say, forget this person, forget this person. You got people like myself who's bringing on different people, you know, different people who's giving you information and also, you know, giving you their life. And a lot of people, some of the things that some people are saying, it's very, very dangerous for them and dangerous for me also. But I don't care because, you know, I, I let it go. You know what I'm saying? And I'm good with these. So whatever. So uh, I got a lot more coming this week. I'm not going to let y'all uh, 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 know who's coming, but I got more people this week. I, we, we not. Listen, we not stopping. OK, we not stopping for nothing. Nothing can stop. Today is your birthday. Happy birthday, Bridget. You know what I'm saying? Um, Today. Oh, casual from Hyrule. I got it. That's my fault. That's my fault. Casual hit me. That's my fault. So I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna get casual on here. But um, yeah, this is this is what we do this for. You know what I'm saying? We gotta we gotta make these go viral. We definitely gotta uh uh get these numbers up crazy. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm almost at two hundred thousand subscribers. Yo, we gotta get more uh subscribers. Also, before I go. Many, many people keep asking me about this weight loss thing. How did I lose weight? What do I eat? What do I drink? So I wrote out a list of everything that I was eating and drinking. So I'm going to give that out one day. I don't know how I'm going to present that to the people. I really don't know yet if it's something that I'm just going to put out there. Because again, you know, a lot of people get rewarded for their intellectual property. And um, a lot of times, you know, I be putting out stuff and, and, and it took somebody like Nori to say, yo, this the man right here. But you know, some of the things that I say and do, I want it to the masses, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I love my channel and everything, but you know, we need more. Cause a lot of people be putting out videos 
and they don't be doing, uh, you know, they be doing these crazy numbers, and I'd be like, why is everybody watching this? Didn't y'all just, just didn't y'all just see what I put out there? You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. So it is what it is. We still building. We still are millions of views and millions. Don't let them get it. Don't let them get it twisted. We are millions of views and we are crazy uh, all the way. A uh, uh, lot of minutes watch. We got the audience. You know what I'm saying? But um, we need we need the masses. We we trying to change the perception of how people think here. You know what I'm saying? Intelligence is gangster. We ain't we ain't on no fool coon. We you know we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, right? Either you the king or you the jester. The jester is there to entertain the king, you know, so I, you can't be both. And what I said about Meek Mill, well, you can look at my Twitter, what I said about Meek Mill, right? What I said, as I said on, on, on um, Drink Champs, is that, listen, if you keep around clowns and you mess with clowns, it's only a matter of time for that paint get on you. So Meek been calling 6 9 out for some years now. Now, when he finally show up, you're forever tied to a clown. You're forever, ever, ever, ever going to be known as the guy that 6 9 ran down on. Just like you rappers who like to talk about death and I got the Draco and they want to kill me and all that. You keep calling the Grim Reaper. Keep calling the Grim Reaper. It's only a matter of time before he show up. Keep calling the Grim Reaper. He gonna show up. With that, I'm out of here. Peace. Make sure you uh, click subscribe. YouTube.com slash Doggy Diamonds TV. Until next time, peace.